Greetings, everybody. My name is Mr. Trizzle. In this video, we're going to verify signatures so that we can authenticate that the cube's ISO we are downloading is genuine. Now, this is going to be the Windows version of verifying signatures for cubes. You can use any operating system that you wish and still be able to follow along, but things will be slightly different. Let's get started. First step is to visit the cubes website. Link is in the description below. Alternatively, you can Google cubes and find their website from there. Once on the website, navigate your way to the downloads page. Scroll down to the Cubes releases and pick a version that works best for you. I personally will be selecting the stable Cubes release version 4.0.3. Begin your download of the ISO or torrent file of your choice. Download this to a place where you can easily find and come back to at a later time. For this tutorial, we will be downloading everything to the C cubes directory that we will create to make things so much easier. This will be provided in the description below. You'll need the detached PGP signature and the cubes release signing key. To do this, right click each link and click on save as. Put these files in the same directory as your ISO as this is very important. You can download the cryptographic hash values if you wish, but in this tutorial, we won't be using them. We might use these at a later time if I make another video about hash verifications. Next, open up the link that says how to verify downloads in a separate window or tab. On the verifying signatures page of the Cubes website, please take a few minutes to read the what digital signatures can and cannot prove section for your own safety. In the next few steps, we're going to verify Cube's ISO signatures by getting the Cube's master signing key and verifying its authenticity, verifying our Cube's release signing key, and verifying our Cube's ISO or turret. After we do that, we're done. Let's get started. Before we begin, we'll need a program that can verify PGP signatures. Any such program will do, but here are some examples for popular operating systems. If you're using Windows, We'll use GPG for Win. Click on the link on the Verifying Signatures page for GPG for Win to download and install. Documentation is also provided. If you're using Mac or Linux, the appropriate program links are also provided. First step is to grab the Cube's Master Signing Key. There is a link to the Cube's Master Signing Key under the Get the Cube's Master Signing Key and verifying its authenticity. Right click the Cubes Master Signing Key and save to the C Cubes directory. Please open up a terminal. For Windows, click on the Start button and type cmd.exe, then press Enter. The command will be provided in the description below. With the terminal open, type cd slash. Following that, navigate to where your files are saved. For this tutorial, we will type cd cubes. You should be at the C Cubes directory if you're following where we put our files. We will be keeping this terminal open for the rest of the tutorial. Next, you can copy the commands from the website into the terminal by highlighting the command and right-clicking copy. Then, in the terminal, right-click and click on paste. If you get the error, GPG2 is not recognized as an internal or external command, then change the GPG2 at the beginning to just GPG. If this works for you, then from now on in the tutorial, you will need to replace all the GPG2 references to just GPG. In this tutorial, we will be strictly using GPG instead of GPG2. Use the left and right arrow keys to navigate the terminal as the up and down arrow keys will repeat commands that you have already typed before. After you have successfully typed the import command into the terminal, press enter. You should see the following in your terminal. It may not be exactly what you see here, but what's important is the GPG key, which should be DDFA1A3E3687-9494. Alternatively, if you want to grab the master key from the terminal, there's a few ways to do it. For Windows, we can type the following command. In doing so, please verify that the DDFA1A3E3687-9494 is precedent. Is precedent? is present. Alternatively, we can grab it from a public key server. 
The following command should be pasted inside the terminal. Please keep in mind that I have given you many options on how to retrieve the master key. You don't need to do all of these. Only one will suffice. You can find more options on how to retrieve the master key from the Verifying Signatures page. On the following screen, you'll see the Cube's Master Signing Key fingerprint. This fingerprint is the most important because it will tell us how authentic that master key file is. Please take a few moments to look at this fingerprint. You do not need to do any commands with this. The author of this article has given us many options on how to verify if the fingerprint is authentic. But what if the page we're looking at is compromised? Down below, you should see a few links to mailing lists, discussion forums, social media, and personal websites. Please click on a few of these links and look for the fingerprints. All the fingerprints should be exactly the same. Should any of the fingerprints be different, it could be a sign that something has been compromised. Please consult help on what to do next if this occurs. If all fingerprints are the same from all websites, that means the fingerprint is authentic and we can continue forward. We will use that fingerprint to compare it to the master signing key that we downloaded. If you're using Windows, open up Windows Explorer and navigate to the cubes directory on the C drive. Once there, double click the cubes master signing key. You'll see an important result which should be successful. Click OK. On your taskbar, you should see a picture of Cleopatra. Double click on it. You should see the following screen. What's important here is the key ID. Compare the last four blocks of the fingerprint to the fingerprint on the website. If they match, success! We have now verified that the master signing key is indeed authentic. We can proceed forward. Next, we need to edit the master key and give it ultimate trust so that we can automatically verify the rest of the keys. With the terminal window open, copy and paste the following command. Your master key will look different than mine. Mine is already set to ultimate. We're going to do the same for yours now. Your cursor should have automatically changed from C cubes to GPG. We're now inside the GPG program where we can edit the keys. Type FPR. Before continuing, please verify the pub fingerprint to the fingerprint on the website. If the same, type trust to trust the key. We're now going to trust the master key completely. Type five and then press enter. It will ask you if you want to ultimately trust the master key. Press Y and then hit enter. You should get a message that the master key has been trusted ultimately. We can go ahead and quit the program. Type Q and press enter. We need to import the cube's master key into our key ring. Type the following command. Please take a moment to verify the fingerprint of the master key to verify it hasn't changed. The following section is about the release signing key and how to acquire it. If you've been following the tutorial this far, you should have already downloaded the release signing key from the downloads page. The following steps have been slightly edited from the website. The website uses general commands that require the user to edit the commands for versions they downloaded. For example, one of the commands has you replace X with the name of the release signing key you downloaded. The original is here, followed by the modify. We will be doing minor modifications from this point forward. Use the following command to import the cube's release for signing key into the GPG. Keep in mind that this step assumes that you have already downloaded cube's release 4.0.3 and the appropriate release signing key and the detect GPG signatures. In case this hasn't worked, we can still download the keys from other sources. Fetch the release signing key using GPG. Only a few steps are left until we are done. We need to sign the release signing key with the cube's master signing key. We can do this with the following command. The following screenshot may not be exactly the same as yours. What's important here is verifying the cube's master signing key to make sure it hasn't changed. Also, make sure the release signing key has been signed by the master key with the SIG 
exclamation mark prefix. If you have a dash after the SIG, that means the signature is bad. If you have a percent after the SIG, that means an error has occurred. It is important that the exclamation point after the SIG is present. If it is not, please do not progress forward. Now we need to verify that the release signing key is in your keyring. Use the following command to do that. GPG dash K cubes OS release. You should see a fingerprint and the line that says UID full cubes OS release for signing key. The last step is probably the hardest, but we're almost done. We need to verify our cubes ISO which all of this has been leading up to. We're going to change a few commands. Here are a few before and after screenshots. To ensure I had this correct, I opened up my Windows Explorer, navigated to the cubes directory that we created, and right-clicked the cubes r 403 x 86 underscore 64 ISO, and I clicked on Rename. I then copied the cubes-r4.0.3-x86 underscore 64 name and hit Escape. Then I replaced the cubes-rx-x86 underscore 64.iso.asc with cubes-r4.0.3-x86 underscore 64 dot ISO dot ASC. Ensuring you get this part correct is absolutely crucial. If correct, it will verify the ISO. This process can take a while. So grab a cup of coffee and a donut. Once completed, you should see the following message. The most important part of this message is the part with the good signature from Cube's OS release for signing key. Success! You are done. You can now go flash the ISO to a USB drive. Further down the page, you can find troubleshooting if you need it. Thank you for watching. You can further verify the signatures and file if you wish, but this tutorial ends here. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below. And don't forget to vote DDFA. 1A3E36879494 for president.